Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship online at Still Heights Baptist Church. So glad that you could join us this morning as we seek to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, during this third Sunday of Advent 2020. And I want to begin our service with a reading from the Gospel of Luke. Hear the word of the Lord. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But an angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you for sending us your son. And as we worship you today, God, May you fill us afresh with the power of your Holy Spirit, with the hope and the peace of this message that we have a Savior, that born unto us is the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we bless you, and we just commit ourselves to you now. We ask you to be glorified through this service. In Christ's name, amen. Sing, go. 
with us even now his love is here come and worship worship Christ the newborn King God is with us the God who saves. Oh, Heavenly Father, we have come here to worship, to worship you, Lord, no matter where we are, God, whether we are here in this sanctuary, Lord, from our living rooms, from our kitchens, God, we have come to worship you. Lord, you are our eternal King. You are the one who brings us joy, hope, and peace. Lord, you did that 2,000 years ago when you came to this earth, and you do it now, each and every day in our lives. Oh God, I pray that you would forgive us for those times where we, where we focus on our circumstances rather than focusing on you and allowing you to bring us that peace that we so desperately need. Oh God, our world needs your peace. Our world so desperately needs the peace that passes all understanding. That can only come from you. Lord, we need peace in the midst of our circumstances. We need your peace to help us through those difficult days. And Lord, as we walk through this Christmas season that is like no other Christmas season, God, I pray that our focus on you would be sharpened. Lord, may we be reminded of the many blessings that you have given us over our lives. Lord, would you draw us closer to yourself? And Father, I pray that we would be an encouragement and that we would show your joy and hope and peace to the world around us, Lord, as we come in contact with people over these next couple of days. Father, I pray that your light would shine through us into this dark world. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Oh, greetings, Steelers, from what definitely isn't not not my office. Well, hey, if your name is Curtis Blaze, I want you to reach under your couch and grab a connection sheet. For everybody else, I want you to reach out and connect with somebody about whether or not you think that Curtis Blaze actually reached down to grab a connection sheet. You can text or message or email or phone. Bonus points if you actually send a postcard. With this Christmas season being more isolated, let's remember to keep connecting and keep on reaching out to one another. Okay, on to business. The children's virtual Christmas concert that was scheduled for today has been moved to next Sunday, December 20th. 
Now, if you've seen the photos from the set, you know that this is going to be well worth the wait. And besides, you get to open like seven more doors on your advent calendar. How sweet is that? Many of you know that we're planning an awesome online Christmas Eve service for you and your family to enjoy. That service will be available anytime after 3 p.m. on December 24th. I want to highlight some of the ways that you can give to Steel Heights during this season. Giving of your offering is another way to worship God and reflect His generous nature. You can bring in your offering to the church office during the week with your mask and give it to any one of the staff that's here. You can log on to our website at www.shbc.ca and click on the giving portion of the webpage. You can send in an e-transfer using your banking apps to giving at shbc.ca. God, thank you that you generously and graciously gave us your son, Jesus, to reconnect us to you. I pray that the gifts that are given to SHBC will be used to help people come to know your joy, your hope, your peace, and your love. Amen. Ben, are you using my office again? beautiful song of our faith. Thank you, Winona, for uh, your offertory this morning. Well, just before I begin uh, my message today, I want to talk about an exciting development that I reported in my uh, Friday update, and I just wanted to go over that a little bit here at the beginning of my message, just so you know what's going on. I really want to encourage you to Check out my Friday update. It's on our website. Just go to our homepage and click on updates and my Friday video update is there. And in that update, you'll see that we uh, are entertaining a proposal for a merger. A merger of two churches uh, from the Alberta Baptist Association, ourselves and Fresh Manna Church. So there's lots of, uh, lots of details to come. I'm going to give another update this coming Friday, and there will be a report that goes out with my update. So please check out uh, both last Friday's update, this Friday's update. I think that God has uh, something really special prepared for us and for Fresh Man at Church as we look at coming together, two churches uh, under Still Heights Baptist Church, becoming uh, one congregation and I'm just really excited about how God is leading us through this, so please check out those updates. Well, we have uh, started our Advent series, and we're into our third Sunday of Advent, 
And this series is called Gifts. Every good and perfect gift is from above, based off James 1.17. James reminds us in this verse that God is, he is forever faithful, and his character is unlike the, the shifting shadows. He is our heavenly Father, and who's created all the lights of heaven. And today we are looking at the gift of peace. So let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we bless you. We thank you, God, that you have given us um, so many beautiful gifts, God. And, and the greatest gift of all is the, is the un- indescribable gift of your, of your Son, our Savior, Jesus. And so as we look at the whole area of the gift of peace this morning, I pray, Lord, that your peace would be upon us and that we would just grow in our trust of who you are, God, and um, all that you have for us. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Well, I know a guy who has an amazing gift, and it's the gift of charisma. Um, When he walks into a room, he just, he lights it up, and his energy levels seem to be boundless, and you always feel like you're on some kind of adventure when you spend time with him. And yet one night on a road trip, in a moment of, of honesty and vulnerability, he turned to me and he said, Darren, my, my life is like a series of unfinished circles. And surprised by his admission, I thought to myself, here's a guy who is the life of the party and seems to always have endless drive and, and energy, yet he is struggling with an aching sense of, of incompleteness. Something is missing, uh, a missing piece. I can't stop thinking about it. Just the other day. I was sitting in traffic on my way home from work. I was trying to rock my screaming baby to sleep in the darkness. Laughing superficially at my boss's joke, pretending not to notice he was drunk out of his mind. And the thought occurred to me, what has happened to you? You used to be so sure of what you wanted to do with your life. Happily married. You used to be so in control of everything. It's funny how life speeds up, slows down to this agonizing pace. When you you lose something so important to you. When you're pursuing something you want so badly, but you can't have it. Can't seem to grasp it. And then I thought to myself, hey, it's Christmas. Cheer up, don't be so pessimistic. Philosophical. Scrooge-like. Things will turn around. After all, it's the season of glad tidings of comfort and joy. Comfort and joy? Tidings of comfort and joy. And don't forget, peace on earth and goodwill towards men. (laughs) Peace on earth. Peace on this earth? I want peace. I need peace. And right then, in that moment, I heard the the voice voice of my mother. My Sunday school teacher. My college boyfriend. I think I heard the voice of God speaking to my heart, and he said, fear not, I'm with you. He said, nobody cares how you feel. And she said, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. I will never leave you or forsake you. I remember that quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson. Nothing can give you peace but yourself, nothing but the triumph of your principles. When I heard that, I felt so comforted, free, judged, confused. How can I have peace when there's so much I'm unsure of? Is there a job out there that would actually be fulfilling? Am I going to be a good mom? Will this be the year when things finally turn around? Can our marriage be saved? Will I find friends here? If peace is something I just can't manufacture. If I can't just buy it or achieve it or pull myself up by my own bootstraps. bootstraps and make it on my own. Even if I want it desperately? Somewhat desperately. I'd like to have it. Where is it going to come from? Where? Where?
Well, where does true peace come from and, and how do we find it? In an interview after his third Super Bowl win, New England Patriot quarterback Tom Brady was asked by 60 Minutes correspondent Steve Croft about his success on and off the field. What Brady said about being satisfied in life surprised a lot of the listeners. Brady speaking, there's, there's times where I'm not the person that I want to be. Why do I have three Super Bowl rings and, and still think there's something greater out there for me? I mean, maybe a lot of people would say, hey man, this is what it is. I reached my goal, my dream, my life. Me, I think, God, it's got to be more than this. I mean, this can't be what it's all cracked up to be. I mean, I've done it. I'm 27. And what else is there for me? Croft, well, what's the answer? Brady, I wish I knew. I wish I knew. Here is arguably one of the most successful professional athletes in the world who has won three more Super Bowls since that interview. And yet he is struggling with an the absence of peace and a deep sense of contentment and satisfaction in his life. And sadly, this this is a common story among people from all walks of life. For instance, a person walked into the church uh, office a while back and was wanting to talk to a pastor. The individual was quite distraught because they were struggling with gender dysphoria and wanted to know if God would let them into heaven if they identified as agendered or non-binary, a person who sees themselves themselves as neither man nor woman, no gender identity or no gender to express. And I, I shared with this person the grace of the gospel, of how God created us in his image, male and female, and and how God longs for people to become more like His Son, Jesus Christ, in their character, transformed by the truth of God's Word and through um, the shaping of the love and the power of God's Spirit. My heart went out to this person because they were earnestly looking for peace, a deeper sense of of completion and, and wholeness, like the people in the video we're searching for, like so many of us are searching for. Well, we talked together for a long time, and, and I could tell there was a battle going on in their mind and their soul and even their body about their sexual orientation and their identity. They were longing for an inner harmony and, and a deeper sense of identity and, and meaning. So I'm praying for this person that they will find the shalom peace of God in their life. What does biblical peace look like? And how is it different than worldly peace? Well, to help answer that question, I've invited back the creative folks from the Bible Project. The word peace is common in most languages. People can talk about peace treaties or times of peace. It means the absence of war. And in the Bible, the word peace can refer to the absence of conflict, but it also points to the presence of something better in its place. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. And in the New Testament, the Greek word is erene. The most basic meaning of shalom is complete or whole. The word can refer to a stone that has a perfect whole shape with no cracks. It can also refer to a completed stone wall that has no gaps and no missing bricks. Shalom refers to something that's complex with lots of pieces that's in a state of completeness, wholeness. It's like Job who says his tents are in a state of shalom because he counted his flock and no animals are missing. This is why shalom can refer to a person's well-being. Like when David visited his brothers on the battlefield, he asked about their shalom. The core idea is that life is complex, full of moving parts and relationships and situations. And when any of these is out of alignment or missing, your shalom breaks down. Life is no longer whole. It needs to be restored. In fact, that's the basic meaning of shalom when you use it as a verb. To bring shalom literally means to make complete or restore. So Solomon brings shalom to the unfinished temple when he completes it. Or if your animal accidentally damages your neighbor's field, you shalom them by giving them a complete repayment for their loss. You take what's missing and you restore it to wholeness. 
The same goes for human relationships. In the book of Proverbs, to reconcile and heal a broken relationship is to bring shalom. And when rival kingdoms make shalom in the Bible, it doesn't just mean they stop fighting, it also means they start working together for each other's benefit. This state of shalom is what Israel's kings were supposed to cultivate and it rarely happened. So the prophet Isaiah, he looked forward to a future king, a prince of shalom, and his reign would bring shalom with no end. A time when God would make a covenant of shalom with his people and make right all wrongs and heal all that's been broken. This is why Jesus' birth in the New Testament was announced as the arrival of Irene. Remember, that's the Greek word for peace. Jesus came to offer his peace to others, like when he said to his followers, my peace I give to you all. The apostles claimed that Jesus made peace between messed up humans and God when he died and rose from the dead. The idea is that he restored to wholeness the broken relationship between humans and their creator. This is why the Apostle Paul can say Jesus himself is our Irene. He was the whole complete human that I am made to be but have failed to be. And now he gives me his life as a gift. And this means that Jesus' followers are now called to create peace. Paul instructed local churches to keep their unity through the bond of peace, which requires humility and patience and bearing with others in love. Becoming people of peace means participating in the life of Jesus, who reconciled all things in heaven on earth, restoring peace through his death and resurrection. So peace takes a lot of work because it's not just the absence of conflict. True peace requires taking what's broken and restoring it to wholeness, whether it's in our lives, our relationships, or in our world. And that's the rich biblical concept of peace. Well, as was stated in the video, the Old Testament prophet Isaiah called the future Messiah the Prince of Peace because his coming kingdom would forever be a kingdom of peace peace. Jesus Christ is our Messiah and our Savior. He has not only fulfilled what Isaiah said about him, but he has also fulfilled what the angel said to Joseph. You will name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And that's why Jesus died on the cross, to save us from our sins. Jesus completed the work of, of reconciliation through the cross. He completed all the earthly work the Father assigned him. He is the God of completion. His final words on the cross were tetelestai, a Greek word for it is finished or paid in full. You see, through Jesus' death, peace was restored between a holy God and a, and a sinful humanity. There was peace between those two parties through Christ's death. And, and to all who believe in him and are willing to receive him into their life as their Lord and Savior. To all who accept him by, by faith, who accept God's gift of grace by faith, they are no longer at enmity at at war with God. Like Paul said in Romans 5.1, we read that, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with God. Paul tells us in Philippians 4.7 that there is a peace which, which transcends. It it rises above all understanding and worldly convention. It, it protects your heart and, and your mind in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit works in cooperation with us and he produces peace in us as he leads us into deeper and deeper relationship with Christ. Uh, listen to what, or sorry, listen to how Paul describes this uh, joint peace-producing effort between the Holy Spirit and a believer. Paul writes about it in Romans 8, verse 6. Romans 8, verse 6 reads, The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. Let me read that again. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed 
by the Spirit is life and peace. This is the peace we need to seek and pursue. The psalmist talks about that in Psalm 34, 14. We need to use the, the, the pick and, and the shovel of, of spiritual disciplines to, to break through the hard-packed surface of our, of our sinful nature and our, and our worldliness. And as we can go below that, and as we, as we seek the fertile soil and the receptive seabed of our heart, where the incorruptible seed of God's word can be sown and cultivated in our lives as we partner with the Holy Spirit, producing the precious fruit of peace in our lives. This, this is the peace that passes all worldly convention. It's, it's contrary to circumstantial peace. Yes, it's, it's true worldly peace, it can offer us peace of mind in, in a hundred different ways, in the forms of, of, of savings accounts, of universal health care, of airbags, of police forces, and, and vaccines. And we can be thankful for that. But that's not the heart peace that Jesus was talking about when he said to his disciples on the night of his betrayal, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I agree with Pastor John Piper's teaching on this passage. He, he essentially says... Jesus is not offering us global peace here or inter-ethnic peace or political peace, even though that kind of peacemaking is, is important to him. Instead, what is, what is front of mind here for Jesus is he's offering peace to your heart. That's the type of peace he's offering to us and to his disciples when he, when he said those words in, in John 14. He's, he looks at his disciples. He's looking at his disciples in, that, in the context of that passage. It's during the last hours of his life. And he's saying, look, you guys, you look, you look anxious. You seem troubled. And I, and I don't want to leave you this way. Don't be afraid. Don't be overcome with fear. I'm, I'm not giving you the kind of peace that can be taken away from you. Jesus does not give us peace like the world gives. That evaporates when the police go away and the pandemics come or when we when our cross whatever that looks like appears on the horizon of our lives our cross to bear christ doesn't leave us his peace doesn't escape us it's in the midst of all these kind of tribulations and struggles when jesus produces peace in us that passes all comprehension. Only God can cultivate that kind of peace. My peace. My peace, says Jesus, I give to you. Not the peace that the world manufactures. Jesus said, my peace I give you. The peace I share with my Father. Oh, Jesus invites us into the peace that he shares with his Father. He will pour this peace into your heart, into the innermost region of your life through the indwelling power and presence of the Holy Spirit. This was Jesus' request of his father later that, that night, on that night that he was betrayed. And he prayed and he said, I pray also, for those who will believe in me through my disciples' message, that, that all of them, i.e. future believers, may be one Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us. We're invited into that communion of God. Folks, we find peace in our hearts by joining God 
in this beautiful, life-changing, life-transforming relationship. Well, we had some fog settle into the city on Friday. (laughs) And as many of you know, um, traveling in the fog, it can be hazardous because we don't know what dangers lie ahead. And let's face it, um, this Christmas, for many of us, the, the scene of the nativity is not uh, on the front of our minds right now, sadly. Instead, our thoughts have been clouded by this, this COVID-19 fog that has settled over our lives right now. And it's easy to be, be filled with fear, with some trepidation because of the, the uncertainty of our, of our health, our finances, our jobs, our families, even our own emotional state, as this isolating fog seems to be getting thicker and thicker. I love the response of the 19th century man of God, George Mueller. I love his response to a ship captain while on a transatlantic voyage, commenting on the fog they were encountering, the captain said to Mueller, Mr. Mueller, do you know how dense this fog is? And Mueller's famous response, listen to this, no, I don't, sir. For my eye is not on the density of the fog, but on the living God who controls every circumstance of my life. Those are the words of faith from the mouth of a prayer warrior who has learned to trust in the promises of the Bible and has received the gift of peace in his life. Oh, I love that. My eye is not on the density of the fog, but on my heavenly Father. Folks, get your eyes off the density of the fog that seems to be clouding your path right now with uncertainty and fear. Jesus knows you are worried like Martha. Many of us, we're worried and upset about many things. Ah, no. Instead, follow the beacon of his word. Follow him out of the fog. Follow him out of the unfinished do loops of your life into the unbroken fellowship of love that he shares with his heavenly father, that he invites us into through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. There you will find peace and you will find identity and you will find power and direction in your life. You will find the Prince of Peace who loves you so much. And Jesus said, my peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you, not as this world. So do not be afraid, frightened or dismayed. I am with you always, the very end of the age. Peace be with you, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray together. Oh, Father in heaven, thank you that you, through your word and your Holy Spirit indwelling us and through the gospel of your Son. Lord, you, you, you keep our eyes looking up to you, God. Lord, you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. And today, Lord, we ask that you would fill us afresh with the power of your Holy Spirit and renew within us the gift of peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Shit.
with me. And that is our declaration today because we have the Prince of Peace who resides within us. No matter what lies ahead, we can say, it is well with my soul. Dill Heights, God holds our future and we are going to continue to trust him as a church family and I hope as your families and as individuals that you will trust him as well. And know that his peace is with you and that he is for you and not against you. We'll leave these words of priestly blessing with you today as we conclude our service from number six. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Go in that peace this week, Still Heights. God bless you. Love you guys. Bye for now.